Hey guys, welcome back to our project on unity and variety, where we're using three-dimensional forms to make desserts. So this is where we left off last time with one of ours. You'll notice they have unity in their forms, but they have variety in their details. So from a fondant cake to one with strawberries to one with chocolate drips, they're all a little bit different. Now, what you're going to do in just a second is you're going to go and add crayon details to either A, the places that are too small to effectively get with a paintbrush, or B, you're going to add details like shadows or details like places that you think need to be slightly separate. All right, so here's where I ended up on this one. I've come in and I got things like my polka dots or the edge of my strawberries because that was really skinny or these stripes because I knew I could get in between them but I was worried if I had to do both of them that it might not do the right thing or these tiny ones or the sprinkles so that's what that looks like this one I have a variety of shapes but I have unity in what I've done with my details. So all of my details have pecans, strawberries, and chocolate. So even though there are five, six different things, they have a ver unity in their look. Now when I went in to go do crown detail for that, I came in and I got the chocolate, the pecans, because I wanted the pecans to have kind of a nice, warm, round feeling. So I've gone in and I've given it some shade. I also came in and did the really skinny stuff. For example, these little flecks right here. I went ahead and colored them white because white is not something that stays very well in small spaces on a watercolor. So let's see how we would go about adding paint to this. So I've got my watercolors. I've got my water. Keep in mind, we know that when we're choosing stuff for a watercolor, it's not good to choose like the biggest brush you can. It should really be a brush that's appropriate for the size. So for example, this is not going to stay inside that space. Now, if I was doing the background, yeah, sure, that's fine. But inside these smaller spaces, I really need something more like this or more like this. All right, so I'm going to come in here. And I'll do my watercolor. One, two, swish, swish. Remember, you're not rubbing hard because watercolor should be transparent. It shouldn't be a situation where it's super thick or you have a opaque look like a marker. It's going to look thin, going to look almost like it was, you know, a Sprite bottle. Like a Sprite bottle is green, but it's still see-through. So I could come and paint the things that I definitely wanted to be red. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Let's come make this layer red. And you'll notice where I have crayon, the watercolor does not stay. That's because you've created that resist. You've given it a place where it cannot go that will hold the color that you used with the crayon. Okay, so I've worked where I want my red. The next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be coming in with my second color. Now, there is an important thing for you to think about here. First, you know that you're doing unity on your details and your colors. So you need to think about what would work for all of them. And then the other thing you need to think about is, okay, what is the particular location on my paper that is wet? And what is the location on my paper that is dry? Because if something is wet, then you don't want to paint next to it if you would like your colors to stay where they're supposed to stay. Because things that are wet have a higher tendency to run together. They have a higher tendency to bleed as we would say in painting. So for example, if I have a picture and I were to do, oh, here's my white, red, and then I came next to it and I was like, 
and I want some orange to kind of come next to it. If I put them next to each other, they're likely to run into each other in the same way that a sunset happens. But if I wait until one of them is dry, then I have a much lower chance of having that happen. Okay, so let's get our unified one back. So places that are not touching anything wet. Ooh, right here is not touching anything wet. Right here is not touching anything wet because it's got that line of crown in between it. This bottom ring is not wet. This has nothing wet on it down here with the pie. And this has nothing wet on it. Okay, great. So I'm going to go in and do those. So for example, I think this one's going to be a three tier. So red, brown, and white. Really keep that very classic look of like a Neapolitan cake. And then I think since I have some nice white sprinkles on that, I think painting the cake chocolate would be appropriate. And the brown on the crown is still going to be a little bit different. So that'll still give us a little bit of variety as we go in to do that. Okay. Now I also notice I need something right here. Mm, let's go ahead and do brown. And it's not next to anything wet, so I can go ahead and take care of that. Mm -hmm. Notice I'm paying attention to even my small spaces. And you see I don't have to reload my brush super often just because I'm making sure that that watercolor is distributed in that area. All right, and then we said we need to come down here to the pie crust. So I'm going to come and I'm going to spread my white, my um, not white, brown out. And you see how it's just glancing off of that crown. It's a wonderful way you can make science work for you and your art. Okay. Now in these strawberries, none of these strawberries are touching anything that's wet. So I can actually go ahead and paint them because they're next to things that are dry. So I can come and get that. All right, so right now, as far as things that are not touching anything wet that I could paint without things running together, okay, well, that's touching something wet. That's touching something wet. So is that. I want to leave that white, and I want to leave this white. So right now, I'm at a point where I need to wait and let it dry until it's a nice crispy dry. It shouldn't feel cool to the touch, and it shouldn't feel damp. All right, I'm going to let you guys pause yourselves and go check out what something you want to do with your crayons and your watercolors. Remember, paint next to dry areas. In the meantime, for those of you who are thinking you'd like to just leave it on and just listen to us keep going, we'll look at painting this one. So I can come in, and if I wanted this to be blue, you'll notice I'm not rubbing hard on my watercolor. I'm keeping it nice and transparent. Now, this one we worked with unity in the shapes, but we did a very large variety of details. So I am going to use all kinds of colors on this to kind of emphasize those different flavors that I've put in it. Now the middle of the cake, where the strawberries and the berries are, probably not the best idea for me to go and do that right now because it's next to things that are wet. So instead, I will move to a different location and I will come and paint that. Generally, it's helpful if you are 
methodical, if you have a kind of a plan of how you're going to attack. So either you're doing all the circles first or you're doing all the big parts of the cake first. Something that helps you kind of stay in order so that you don't end up in a really weird spot where you have nothing to paint and you haven't done that much. But either way, even if you're still working on your skills of being methodical, you'll still be fine because you can always let it dry, especially if you're working on this at home. So I've got that. So I'm just gradually going through and getting the different places that I want. I think I'm going to do like a darker teal for this. Eh, it might have been better to do another color. But we're going to stick with it. Oh, you know what? I'm going to show you how we can adjust this color slightly. So I was thinking it was going to be a little bit darker, a little bit more blue. And what I can do to create that for myself is I can give it a minute to get damp so that it's still wet and things will still blend, but it's not totally impossible to work with without it going everywhere. Okay. And then what I can do is I can come back and I can add a color on top of it. Now keep in mind it's not going to completely get rid of the color that it was. What it's going to do is just blend with it and change it just a little bit. Usually it works best if you add a color that's close to it. So for example, I'm adding blue because then that blue green gets more of a bluish tint, more teal than aqua. And you have a better contrast between the crown, like spearminty areas, and the areas that are watercolored. Okay. Very nice. So I'm going through, I'm getting all these different ones. I'm making sure I'm paying attention to how much I'm rubbing on the color. And I'm also paying attention to what's touching anything wet. But you see how to do that. You see what you need and how to create yourself a beautiful painting. You'll also notice that my brush bristles are going in the same direction the whole time. I'm never making it so they start to spread apart. They're always together like a family. That's really important for the health of your paintbrush. You want to make sure that you are taking care of it so that it will still be there for you to use later. Otherwise, you might be in a situation where you have some paint, but you don't have a paintbrush to work with because yours keeps going everywhere. So it's important that you take care of your supplies, and that includes your paintbrush. All right, so I'm always at the point where I've got all of this particular picture done the way I'd like it to be. I just need to get a couple more spaces. We'll do orange. That is my best friend's color. She loves orange. Not my favorite. Green is really my favorite. Green and aqua. So... Now that I've got this, I think this down here is going to be yellow. That way I'm really going for that variety. I mean, you can have some that are the same, but I really want to emphasize how different they are. All right. And then I have this lovely cake. Let's make the bottom of this one chocolate. And then we'll make this one. Let's see, we've used orange, yellow, lime green, teal, blue, purple, and red violet. So I think we'll use red. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. and look, I discovered a secret. I had put. Um, white crayon right there to keep it from going through and to keep that line nice and crisp. 
So obviously, going over it <laughs> with a red was going to be impossible. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you forget, oh yeah, I put that there. All right. So there I have it. I'm ready to let this one dry and then come back. And I will attach a picture of what it looks like later to your Google Classroom. All right. Bye, guys. Good luck painting.